161. That's my score on the GRE Vogel. And getting to that score not only required extensive preparation, but also some tips and strategies, which I'm going to be giving you in this video. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more such videos. And if you're looking to study for the GRE, in one or two months, we have these plans where you can actually go ahead and prepare a day-by-day -day plan for yourself that you can follow to ace the GRE in one or two months based on your availability. Now let's begin with those 10 golden tips. The first one is to not go to offline coachings. And I know that's quite a radical idea, right? Many of you might think, hey, for some people, offline coachings may be right. Some people may need them. Maybe they don't have the concentration to do this at home. But to be very honest with you, if you don't have the habit, you don't have the regimen that you can go ahead, study every day for one or two hours for the GRE, I honestly don't think that you're taking it seriously enough, my friend. Remember, Online videos are okay, but regimen, basically doing it on a daily basis should not be a reason why you go to an offline consulting and you travel to and fro one hour, two hours a day. Not needed, go with the plan I'm telling you, go with the study material that I've suggested in these one or two month plans and you're good. The second tip I have for you is that there's no negative market and that is quite big. You need to realize this. What that means is if you get stuck you will not waste your time. You will guess an answer that seems the best fit to you at this moment. You'll flag the question. That means that you can come back to it later and then you'll move on. Remember, once you flag the question towards the end of the test, you can always go ahead, take a second look at that question. And what happens a lot of times is that you may think of that question from a different perspective once you look at it the second time. Happens all the time. Sometimes we're just looking at it from the wrong angle. We can't get to the answer, but later on when you look at the question, we're good. We already know the answer. All right, so mark, move on, don't waste time. The third tip is to do the easier questions first. This stems from the second tip. Remember, all questions on the GRE, every single question is worth the same exact number of points. It is not the case that you go ahead and you want to basically do the harder questions first because they're worth more points. No, that's not how it works. If you have easy questions in front of you first, you finish them first, you're good. You've scored already the maximum. Then you look at the harder ones. The fourth tip I have for you is to not look at the options. Now, you might call me crazy for saying this. Look at this question right here. And I say, read the question, don't look at the options. Though. Quite crazy, right? How do, you, how do you pick the right answer? Well, there's a strategy behind that. The way you actually do it is by covering up the options with your hand. Next, what you want to do is you want to read the question, understand it in your own head, and for the blanks, you want to use your own word or set of words, could be a phrase, doesn't have to be a single word, right? You basically produce your own answer first. Then using your own answers, what you do is you go on and you try to match your answer with the ones that are in the options. So let's say your answer is ABC and you see a synonym of ABC in the options, you pick that. That is the best strategy. Why? Because the GRE is trying to trick you. They will give you all the options that look Correct, but at the end of the day, many of them are not correct. And sometimes you'll get lost with the meanings of the words. And that's why I want you to follow the strategy and you will yourself see the change. The fifth and one of the biggest tips I have for you is to use the right resources. What can happen if you're using the wrong resources? You're studying newspapers, you're reading newspapers and you're trying to read books, irrelevant books according to the GRE, they're just really far off, like they're out of the ballpark. What you're doing is you're focusing your energy on the wrong resources. That means that when you actually start preparing for the GRE, you will realize that you've really done nothing yet. So use these resources. If you're studying text completions or sentence equivalences, I recommend that you use either the Magush material or Princeton 1014 book. These will be golden resources for you for these question types. In the case of reading comprehensions or logical re reasons, which are just the shorter versions of reading comprehensions, you want to use the Manhattan five pound book because that is hands down the only resource you will need for these question types. By the way, a lot of study material is available on ymgrad.com. So make sure you sign up, get a lot of that free material and even the premium material may be discounted for you. Point number six is to use the right strategy. Now for text completions, sentence equivalences, I've already given you the right strategy. And that is that you use your own fill in first and then you move on towards looking at the answers, right? And then you choose the right synonym. Well, for reading comprehensions and logical reasoning, 
the right way would be if you have the passage and the questions, you look at the question number one first, then you start reading from the passage from the top to the bottom. As soon as you get your answer, it could be in the first paragraph itself, right? You stop right there. You mark the answer. You read the next question. That's question number two. And then you start reading the passage right from where you left off. You know why we do that? The reason is simple because we know that the GRE questions are always in the order of the passage. So question one is usually from paragraph one, question two from paragraph two or three. Similarly, it moves down, it does not move upwards. It's not randomly assigned. Point number seven is to accept that you cannot know all the words. It's simply not possible. I personally studied about four to 5,000 words, I think, before going for the GRE. And still there was this one question with a single blank. I still remember that. And just because I did not know the meaning of one word, I could not select the right answer. In cases like these, what you have to resort to is word roots. You have to understand that all these words are connected. For instance, if you think about the root equi, anything that starts with this root is generally more or less going to mean something which is equal. So some examples are equivalent, equidistant, equilibrium, equimolar, all of these basically try to tell you that these things that they're talking about are equal, right? So similarly, you can understand the meanings of similar words using many other word roots. Point number eight is to maintain a personal dictionary. Yes, that's very important because we are only studying the official GRE materials now. It doesn't have to be official, even, you know, third party sources, but it's all GRE material, right? We're not doing random newspapers or books or, you know, anything of that sort. That means whenever you come across a word that you don't know the meaning of, it is an important GRE word. And the best thing to do in such a situation is to write down the word, write all the meanings or synonyms that you can find for it, and then a sentence below it. I've personally done this for more than 5,000 words, I think, at this point. And trust me, it is worth every single second you spend on it. Of course, you have to study this personal dictionary by yourself. Now, if you need, my dictionary is also available for a small price, but I highly recommend that you do it on your own. But if you need the dictionary, you can go on to newstudymaterial.com. Point number nine is to make sure that you don't reread the passes. A lot of people, they don't really understand what's going on, right? Trust me, it was me as well in the past. We don't understand what's going on. So we go ahead, try to read it again. And then again, and then again, maybe this time I'll get it. But the thing is, if you're not understanding it in the first one or two times, you're not going to understand it very easily, right? It's going to go over your head. In such a case, remember that you don't have to memorize the passage. Try to do your best and move on to the other questions because you'll skip the easier questions just by sticking to this part of the passage. Point number 10, and probably the most important point is to leave time for a review. That means don't finish off at the end moment. No, don't do that. The GRE is shorter now. There's lesser time, lesser questions, but we still want to save at least two minutes or so for a review. And the reason for that is that we want to either check the answers we are not sure about or look at the harder ones, which we flagged in the past, remember? So get used to the timer, finish in advance, and of course, always review. Now, these were just 10 top tips, but wait, hold on. Before you leave, there's a lot more about the GRE going to be coming up on this channel. We already have a lot of free study material and everything that we're doing. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you need any help, my WhatsApp number is in the description. Reach out to me and you can also follow me on Instagram for more such quick and smart tips for the GRE. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye and take care until that time and all the best for your GRE.